Hey guys, just want to welcome you in for a very special day, Creepy Pasta Day. So, if you thought you were out of the woods just because it's October, don't count on it just yet. Settle yourselves by your firesides for a special Creepy Pasta Day upload that Mia Mina likes to call the only one. The beginning of our annual camping and hiking adventure was uneventful. We started at Bly Gap, North Carolina, traveling north on the Appalachian Trail toward the Great Smoky Mountain National Forest backcountry. Our planned hike took us the whole 95.7 mile trail in North Carolina from the Georgia State Line to the Virginia State Line, then back down to Northern Cherokee National Forest, off trail for five additional days of hiking. Our conversation centered around taking the whole Appalachian Trail next year. The five to seven months to complete the hike from Georgia up to Maine was a dream for us all. That night, we were off trail in the Great Smoky Mountain National Forest for our first night of four. It usually took two days for us to get through, but we plan to take our time this year. Camping off trail in the backcountry, let us explore the area as we had not in the past. Our small nine-person group was too pretend, except me. After our second annual trip, my fiancé, Ezra, and I got a new tent due to storm damage. Since Ezra died shortly after the new year, the year after... I had extra space in my tent for supplies. We packed the supplies around the perimeter of the tent, leaving me in the center. I made a path to the center around the supplies, so there was no direct entry from the front of the tent to me. Like many campers, we told stories around the fire in the center of our five tents of the land and her legends. Having grown up in the tribe, we heard lots of stories about creatures which hunted, chased, and fed off animals and men. We told the stories with a high level of memory after hearing them so many times. Elia, Penny, and I were born and raised Cherokee. Penny's father was a Didanowski, or medicine man. While she had not followed his path, we had grown up with a few stories and tales he and the other elders told. Often, she would tell us stories we hadn't heard yet to scare us. We drifted off to our tents as the night wore on. Eric and Sam were the last two at the fire. We all were asleep from our long hiking day before it was too late. I'm not sure exactly how much time had passed when I woke up. I'm not really sure why I was awake. I looked around in the dark of the tent, listening to the woods. A slight amount of light from the moon filtered through the trees. In the dim light, I thought I saw the shadow of a large elk buck outside the tent. Instead of the four hooves I expected from the elk, I heard something bipedal walking around the tent with soft footfalls. As a scout and trail guide, I knew how to tell. There were only two at first. Then, it changed. I didn't hear another creature join it, but the number of feet I heard changed as it moved around all the tents. Eventually, it came back to the tent next to me. I wanted to warn the others. I wanted to scream, but something was holding me back. I couldn't move or make a sound. Then, I heard a whisper in my ear. Don't move. Don't make a sound. Just listen. I found I had no choice. I felt the ripping of tent material causing my heart to race. I no longer could see the elk antlers. 
where I had imagined some deranged killer slicing into the tent next to mine to kill Scotty and Penny, there was a hiss and a rattling as the now slender body struck each of them quickly. Next, I heard the massive creature ripping their skin open with claws. I was paralyzed and unable to use my voice to scream as squishing sounds filled my ears. My mind imagined my friends being eviscerated, then their organs eaten by some creature. I couldn't allow myself to imagine it was a human. Tears ran down my face as I silently and motionlessly sobbed. The paralyzing grasp continued to hold me for hours while the attack on my friends moved around the tenth circle. At some point, I passed out. Later, I woke afraid to move, but found the force paralyzing me gone. The sun was barely making it through the trees as I managed to steal the courage to leave the tent. The tracks of many different animals littered the ground at our campsite. The other tents were torn open, with the bodies of my friends mutilated within them. I sank to the ground, crying next to our fire pit. A search and rescue team found me a few days later, curled up in the fetal position in my tent. Dehydrated and traumatized, I was afraid to move or leave the tent. Though the creature came back every night to feed more on my friend's remains, it left me alone and alive. I tried to describe what I heard, but ended up in sobs again. The Cherokee scout, Kevin, went pale as I spoke of the creature which left the multitude of tracks in our camp. I had no physical description or name for the creature. When alone, Kevin whispered, of a nameless creature, newly discovered in the mountains, yet ancient. It had been able to hide until now. Man had encroached on its habitat, revealing its existence to few who, like me, survived. Laying on this hospital bed, I continually ask, Can someone please explain to me why I'm not dead? Why was I left alive to dream of these terrors? Well, if you were thinking about camping out with your favorite monsters this creepy past today, maybe think again. But don't go too far. Remember that shortly we begin the 13 days of Halloween. And until then, have a happy creepy pasta day.